So our next speaker uh, is a product manager, a web developer, and a geek dad working on Google Cloud. And uh, at one point, he was also one of our board of directors for the Node Foundation. So please welcome Justin Beckwith and uh, the case for Node. Thanks. Thanks. Greetings, folks. Thanks for coming today. Node.js, when it came out uh, in 2009, since then, it's had a profound impact on my career. And it's really changed the way that I look at technology, changed the way that I look at open source software, and changed the way that I look at doing collaboration with communities. And so I'm really, really excited to be here today and talk about my personal journey with Node.js, uh, how we brought it to the first company where I was working at, and then how we made the case for Node at Google. So before we do that, we have to go back in time all the way back to the year 2007, which I know what you might be thinking, Node.js was not out in 2007. That is correct. I was working at a university, and we were building a learning management system. And it was your typical end-tier application. It had a front end that had a lot of JavaScript, had a back end that was ASP.NET and C Sharp, SQL Server. And really, our application, as we started adding more features for users, just became more and more and more complex. And at that time, we had a lot of code that looked kind of like this. Uh, it was a big, beautiful mess of disastrous jQuery um, with re no real rhyme or reason for how we plugged it together. And when we started, it was all fine. But as time went on and we added features, we realized that testing was kind of hard. We had no way to separate our components and understand how to have tests for each individual part of the site. There were really a lack of prescriptive patterns out there, or at least ones that we could find that helped us organize our large single page application and build it in a sustainable way. And back then, there were still a ton of browser inconsistencies. And this is something that's gotten a lot better over the years, but it was very hard back then. You had to use a framework like jQuery. The truth of all of this is that we were just kind of bad at JavaScript. Uh, we were really a .NET shop that had been building C Sharp for a bunch of years and had really started to get into the new wave of uh, very, very useful front-end web applications that kind of moved in that single-page app style. And so instead of, uh, instead of going and making it better, we decided, of course, it's not us. The problem is obviously JavaScript. And so we did what any team who was enlightened at the time would do, and we took a bet on the future of modern UI development on the web. <laughs> that was a mistake. <laughs> Again, I will remind you the year was 2007, where another very important event happened that kind of shaped the future of technology, and this device came out. And this device and Flash, as it would turn out, they did not really play well together. And so for us going out there and releasing it, we'd built our beautiful Flash app, and we had one of these kinds of experiences. So again, now moving forward in time, up to the year 2010, feeling a little bit you know, disheartened by our experience. And we had a new piece of our system that we had to go build. We were getting all of these requests to be able to operate our application uh, with iPhones, iPads, uh, applications that are, uh, devices that did not support Flash. And we needed to build this uh, VNC thing. So there was a Flash application with VNC. It would go through a proxy for a variety of reasons and connect to a backend server. And when we went to build this, we were thinking, OK, well, not all of our clients are going to have port 5900 open to be able to use VNC. We wanted to be able to operate over HTTP. So all we needed to do was write some code that created an HTTP request with a long timeout, some chunk transfer encoding. Um, we're going to have to do connection management, state management, make sure that we did all the reconnects, uh, have a half-decent API. And no, this wasn't going to work for us. Um, we went out searching for answers, and we stumbled upon Socket.io. And this, for us, was when everything as a team for us changed. We found this very simple API that let us use WebSockets or fall back to uh, HTTP long pulling. It did everything for us. It ran on top of this funny thing that we hadn't heard about called Node.js, um, and it means bringing JavaScript back into our development process. But we were able to take something that was going to be several thousand lines of uh, poorly cobbled together C Sharp and ActionScript and do it in somewhere around 40 to 50 lines of Node.js. And it was just an amazing experience for our team. We moved on, we discovered Express, and we started re-rationalizing our decisions around ASP.NET and web forms, and we wanted more clarity in a simpler API, and we started moving one service at a time slowly over to Express. We started exploring more, and we discovered Backbone, and we realized, hey, there are patterns for front-end web development that aren't completely insane and end with a soup of jQuery code. 
And really what had happened is we had took kind of the opposite path that a lot of people take, where you start in the front end and move down through the server. Node.js made us fall back in love with JavaScript, and it helped us build effective web applications. And from there, we were hooked. So now, again, forward in time, and we move on to 2015. This was when I joined Google. Um, one of the neat things about joining Google is often when you go there, you actually don't know what you're gonna work on right away, and you get to choose your own story. Uh, this is an organization that traditionally, it's pretty well known, uh, Google writes a lot of Python, C++, Java, and of course, the inventors of Go, so we run a lot of that in the cloud. And I wanted to sort of get together with a few folks that I'd found that are passionate about Node and ask the question, how can we make the case for Node.js at Google? How can we make this something that's important to the organization and make sure that we're actually engaging with this community? And of course, you know, when you go to make this case, we can start with who's running Node.js? I'm stealing some of the content from yesterday. Companies like Netflix, PayPal, Groupon, some huge internet companies and real businesses that are taking a bet on the technology. But when you're at Google, you can't just come up with, you know, hey, these people are doing it, so it must be important. You have to have data for all of your decisions. So what are the trends? What if we took a look at GitHub and asked the question of, if we look at activity repositories, so the number of PRs and what language they're using, can we figure out what is the most popular language over time? And so it turn out, all this data is in BigQuery. And you can actually go and do that, and you can model it. And the first thing that pops out here is that blue line streaking at the top above everybody else. Yeah, that's JavaScript. Um, and it doesn't really show any signs of slowing down. Next down, you're going to find, uh, you're gonna find Python is kind of flattening out with the number of PRs over time that are being submitted. And Java, interestingly, is actually starting to have a significant decrease. Um, that one, there's one purple line there that's noticeably going up, that's Go. So let's take that, that was six years of data that we were just looking at, six years of software development on GitHub. Let's limit that down to one year. A Little bit less impressive, because it's gonna be a little bit more flat, but the one thing you'll notice is a new language in the top 10 creeps in, and it's TypeScript. So now the number one and number 10 most popular languages in use on GitHub today by number of PRs are JavaScript and TypeScript, which of course compiles to JavaScript. So we can see the number of open source developers are there. We can make this case. But the next question you're gonna get is, well, that's great. What about developers that, oh, they're not on GitHub? This is not a world I wanna live in. Um, but as it would turn out, even developers not on GitHub still need to ask questions. And so we can use Stack Overflow as a way to figure this out. So we modeled that data over the last nine years, looking at every tag on Stack Overflow that's related to a specific programming language. And you can see again, Node or uh, JavaScript up at the top, Python, interestingly, just in the last six months, eclipsed Java on the number of questions for tags on Stack Overflow, and then the other language is just everybody else. So okay, another case, it's not just open source developers on GitHub that are building this, it's everybody. That's great, how do we move forward? And the trick here is much like in the, the initial example where we were coming on, you start small. Start with a small way to get into the community, get some feedback, and learn. So we put documentation out there uh, for Google Cloud and said, okay, we're gonna document some simple things you can do to get started, listen to the community. You measure, improve, listen to people, come back. We launched App Engine, uh, uh, no, support for Node.js on App Engine in beta last year. We start to get more feedback and we, we see tweets like this that say, I was at Node Summit, I was in Interactive, not a single bit of engagement from Google or from V8, it's weird. And it was a little bit weird. So the next stage for us after we build a few products is get involved. So we joined the Node.js Foundation. We went and the V8 team has been making a huge commitment to Node.js, making sure that every new commit inside of V8 is not going to break Node, helping with performance improvements, engaging in the TSC, and just getting deeply involved. And then of course, here at this conference, we've got eight Googlers who showed up to give talks, among 21 Googlers who have actually come and made the trip. So we feel like we're getting involved. Now along this path of going from no involvement to kind of full engagement, I've learned a couple of things. One is start small. Don't come in and say, for my whole organization, for my entire dev team, we're gonna switch everything from decades of experience to Java over to JavaScript. You're not gonna be successful. Find a small thing where it makes sense, where it's strategic, and introduce it gently into the organization. Make sure you're solving real problems. Again, find that special thing where it just makes sense and where Node.js is gonna feel right and then go teach your team how to use it, answer their questions, and see if it fits. And finally, when you're making your decisions, make sure that you're using data. And finally, grow the involvement. 
And that's why for us, we're growing our involvement. Google is now, uh, we're announcing we're an official uh, platinum member of the Node.js Foundation. 